we will begin our first look at determinants. However, I'm not going to start with the definition of the determinant of a square matrix, because doing so will not help you realize why it is defined the way it is. Besides, the definition can easily be found in many books and online resources. So instead, I will pose a question, and if you pursue the answer to the question to the very end, you will have discovered for yourself the notion of determinants. The journey won't be easy, but it will be rewarding. Consider system AX equal to B, where A is a square matrix. There is A is an n by n matrix for some n. You are told that there is a unique solution X satisfying this system. The question is, given this knowledge, can you give a formula for the solution using only simple operations on the entries in A and B? A notion of determinants will become clear once you have the answer to this question. Note that I say a notion because we are deriving it within a specific context. There are other ways to get to determinants which we won't discuss here. Now we can pretty much ignore the 1 by 1 case because that is too easy. So let's look at the case when A is 2 by 2. And we'll write A as the following matrix. U1, U2 in the first row and V1, V2 in the second row. And we'll take B to be B1 and B2. Because AX equal to B has a unique solution, we cannot have U1 and V1 both be 0, because otherwise there's either no solution or infinitely many solutions, because we can set X1 to anything we want. So at least one of U1 and V1 must be non-zero. And we'll assume that U1 is non-zero. You can do similar calculations assuming V1 to be non-zero instead. And I encourage you to give that a try. You should come to the same conclusions. So we're going to start with the augmented matrix and perform some elementary row operations until we know what the solution should be. So I'm going to replace row 2 by u1 times row 2 and then replace row 2 by row 2 minus v1 row 1 and so we'll end up with this because we are told that the system has a unique solution, this quantity here, u1, v2, minus u2, v1, must be non-zero. And what that means is, we can get x2 right away. And x2 will be u1, v2, minus v1, v1, divided by u1, v2, minus u2, v1. And from this, you can get x1 as well. So x1 is going to be b1 minus u2 times x2 and then divided by u1 and that will give us u1 v2 b1 minus u2 v1 b1 minus u1 u2 b2 plus u2 v1 b1 all divided by u1 times u1 v2 minus u2 v1 and as you can see here these two terms will give you 0 and then you're left with a factor of u1 in the numerator so I can divide that out and you're left with v2 b1 minus u2 b2 divided by u1 v2 minus u2 v1. Alright, now I'm going to write x1 and x2 in a special way. And to do that, I'm going to define something called d2 of a matrix. So define d2 of a matrix, say p1, p2, q1, q2, to be the quantity p1, q2 minus p2, q1. And I'll ask you to check that x1 can be written as d2 of this matrix divided by d2 of A. And x2 can be written as d2 of this matrix divided by d2 of A. Now notice that in x1, the matrix here is obtained from A by replacing the first column with B1, B2. 
and for x2 the matrix here is obtained from a by replacing the second column by b1 b2 and as you might have guessed d2 is the determinant function of a 2 by 2 matrix now the thing is you can actually go the other way if you are just given the system ax equal to b if this quantity d2 of a turns out to be non-zero you can actually show that x1 given by this and x2 given by this is the unique solution to the system and as a result what you can conclude is that the system ax equal to b has a unique solution if and only if d2 of a is non-zero now let's proceed to the 3 by 3 case again a is equal to b having a unique solution means that not all of u1, v1, and w1 can be zero. And we again assume that u1 is non-zero. You could carry out similar calculations assuming v1 non-zero or w1 non-zero. And see if you arrived at the same conclusions. So we'll row reduce the augmented matrix. First we're going to replace row 2 by u1 times row 2. And row 3 by u1 times row 3. And then we are going to clear the entries under U1. Now, if you look at rows 2 and 3, they give you a system involving only x2 and x3, which in turn is a square system. And that system will have a unique solution, because it cannot have more than one solution. For each solution, we can extend it to a solution to the original system, by using the first equation to set x1 to an appropriate value. So we can apply the previous result to this smaller system and obtain values for x2 and x3. So let me change the color of this system. And we're going to apply the result from the previous case to this system. So x2 will be d2 of this matrix here, but with the first column replaced by the right hand side and divided by d2 of this matrix here and x3 is going to be this where d is defined to be this thing here and we know that d has to be non-zero so what we're going to do next is we're going to simplify x2 and x3 and we know what d2 of a matrix is it's given by this as you can see this is quite a mess but this can still be done by hand, or if you have access to a computer algebra system, you can use that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use Maple to compute all these things and write down the result here. So x2 is this. And as you can see, we can divide out u1. And this quantity here will have to be non-zero. Now we can write down a similar expression for x3. And the details will not be shown here, but what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to define D3 of P1, P2, P3, and Q1, Q2, Q3, and R1, R2, R3 to be the following. So P1, Q2, R3 minus P1, Q3 R2 minus P2 Q1 R3 plus P2 Q3 R1 plus P3 Q1 R2 minus P3 Q2 R1 and using this you can write x2 as this and x3 can be written as this. And of course, once you have x2 and x3, you can work out what x1 is. And x1 will be d3 of b1, b2, b3, u2, v2, w2, u3, v3, w3, divided by d3. Of a. So I have left out quite a few details. The details can be easily filled in as long as you have the patience to go through the arithmetic. Now the key is that once I have defined this d3, 
you can see a pattern in x1, x2, x3. Because in the denominator, it's always d3 of a. And in the numerator, you take that coefficient matrix. If you're looking at x1, you replace the first column by the right-hand side. Looking at x2, you replace the second column by the right-hand side. And for x3, you replace the third column by the right-hand side. And as you might suspect, d3 is the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. So the next question is, what about d4 and so on, in general dn. And we'll look at d4 in the next video. In the meantime, I would like you to compute a few determinants and see if you notice anything interesting. So try to find the answers to these. So compute these determinants and pay attention to the steps. See if there's anything that you find interesting. And I will see you again in the next video.